Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. For this week's project is actually, well, spring is coming. My wife was reading a magazine and it showed a little bunny, spring bunny for spring and Easter, made out of a couple of uh, hardware store balls or spheres. And she said, well, can you do that? And I said, well, sure I can. Well, that coupled with I needed to make a, uh, a prepare and warm up for a remote demonstration uh, turning a sphere. I said, well, why not go ahead and turn the spheres for this bunny? Except I can't leave it alone. I've got to do a little bit better. So this bunny has not just the two balls that they talked about. It has two spheres, but it has a couple of feet in the front and it has a cute little bunny tail on the back and some ears that have attitude because they cocked a little bit to the side and it has a little secret compartment with the bayonet style joints that I've developed so that this bunny rabbit is upscaled from the magazine definitely. So let's turn and make this little bunny rabbit in time for Easter and spring. I have already turned this piece of cherry into a cylinder. I will use the octagon method to guide me to cutting the sphere. My cylinder is just over two inches in diameter. With my phone calculator, I multiply this diameter times 0.293 for the distance from a corner of the cylinder containing the sphere to a corner of the octagon. Then times 0.414 for the length of any side of the octagon. Then lay out these measures for key points on the side of the cylinder. The last task in the layout is to set the caliper to the length of the side of the octagon. I will need my caliper to set this length shortly. Then start cutting. First, I need to waste off the excess wood near the live center. I intend to have this do double duty to mark the octagon side diameter on the end. However, I cut too far. My alternate strategy that I frequently use is to mark this with a pencil on the end. I do not like what I see a lot of wood turners do. I do not like to touch calipers to moving wood. I think this to be dangerous. Instead, I estimate the distance with the calipers, mark and extend the mark around the end, then check with the caliper to see if I nailed it. If not, I make a new mark and check again. Much safer this way. Then to the other side to waste the excess wood. This time I did not overcut. Then, since the mark on the circumference and the mark on the end show the end points of the first cut, I can easily cut a 45 degree working down to the two points. Then, repeat on the other end. Following the octagon process, each side is divided in half and then half again. I have to estimate for the octagon sides that contain the turning axis. Then, round off the corners again to get a hexadecagon, then continue rounding to a rough sphere. This is all contained in other videos where I go through the process more slowly. For now, I need to refine the sphere from rough to perfect. This is a sanding process between a cup center and my live center, but padded with a rubber stopper. For each grid of sandpaper, I sand the exposed surface between the cup center and the live center and rotate 90 degrees to a new axis. I repeat this a total of three or more times for the 80 grit. The 80 grit does the final shaping of the sphere. It is now perfect, but has 80 grit scratches. So I move to the next grit and repeat for three rotations. Only three are required after the 80 grit has perfected the shape. Then move through the remaining grits the same way. Then swap the wood and move on to other items such as another slightly smaller sphere for the head and two each of three quarter inch spheres for the tail and feet. Meanwhile, I glued up a couple of pieces of cherry with plain white paper between for a paper joint for a split turning. Since the points on my center will often split the glued block open, I also glued two other pieces of wood across both ends. This will take the center point and avoid splitting the glued block prematurely. With the wood now mounted, I rough it with my bowl gouge, which I find adequate to the task without having to purchase a single purpose and expensive spindle roughing gouge. With the wood now a cylinder, my skew does a great job of shaping the wood into what I hope is an ear shape. Then sand it, although I will be damaging it. At least most of it will be smooth when it is near complete. The wood splits easily at the paper joint with a sharp utility knife. 
actually more easily than I expected it to. I want the ears to have more attitude. So I cut each and took out a small wedge of wood, then sanded each rough end at the disc sander. Now I can put just a dab of glue and complete a rub joint to assemble each ear. I let these dry overnight since I cannot risk them separating. Next, with a small round burr and a rotary carving setup, I want to hollow the center of the long ear and remove any remaining paper from the glue joint. Then touch it with sandpaper and touch up around the joints. I did not sand the interior perfectly smooth. Leaving it rough, I think, gives it a contrast for an inner ear. Next is a fun part. I'm using a bayonet style joints to attach the head to the body and have a small secret compartment in the body. I have mounted the body sphere in a donut chuck where I can drill for both the joint and the body cavity. The joint is one inch diameter, the body cavity can be smaller. I used seven eighths inch Forstner for the cavity. I drilled slightly deeper than required because this is a sphere and would leave a thin ridge. Then with a skew, I removed the thin fringe of wood down to what the joint needs. Then the same thing with the head sphere, except no inner cavity for this side due to the small size. Now to assemble the bayonet joint. I used epoxy to glue the female half into the lower body. When I took this picture, it is ready for the other half of the joint. The bottom is covered with plastic wrap in case of excess glue, and the alignment is marked on the tape on both the body and the head. Then glue on the other side of the joint. With epoxy, I glued one ear in and let it set. I could not handle positioning both ears at once. Then using a popsicle stick and masking tape, I made a splint to keep the second ear in position for gluing. The spheres for the feet and tail need to be cut in half. With the small size, I worried for my and the wood's safety during the cut. I wrapped each sphere in the direction of the anticipated cut with masking tape and then used hot melt glue to fasten each to a popsicle stick. Since the hole in the table is still larger than a popsicle stick, a popsicle stick could fall, still fall in. So they are glued at an angle and a little way from the end so the stick will still bridge the gap. Then the cut was easy and safe on a scroll saw. The rest is more epoxy to assemble the bunny rabbit. My rabbit is much nicer than the one my wife saw in the magazine and it took more time to complete. But I like the bunny and I think it is kind of cute. It is a keeper but I may have to make a basket and eggs to go with the bunny. Spring is long overdue. Still, this is the only bunny I will let in my garden. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. My face shield saved my life. It can save yours, but only if you use it. And I will see you again next week.